Hello everyone, and welcome back to Capture One in One Minute, where we explore one feature of Capture One to make your workflow better and easier. Today we're taking a look at stacking presets at import. And I just don't think enough people really consider doing this. When you come to importing an image, you can apply an edit, but the edit must come in the form of a style or a preset. Let's take a look down here. We have adjustments and we see it says styles, but under the drop down, you get both styles and presets, both custom and built in. Custom being the ones that you make, and of course, uh, built in being the ones that Capture One makes. Now, I have spoken before about how wonderful it is to build a smart adjustment for editing a particular person, maybe somebody in the family, maybe it's somebody you shoot pictures of regularly, and building a custom style that is the edit for that particular person. Right. For instance, I've got one for my son. I've got one for uh, my my friend's kid. I've got one for a model I work with regularly, and we've spoken about that. So let's say we were bringing in a style of an individual person, but what about presets? And here's where we come to the idea of stacking presets. For instance, if I was to uh, say I'm going to bring in a custom style that is for the person that I have taken pictures of, that's wonderful. But I could also come in and I could add in a preset of some kind, maybe for example, this curves adjustment. And if I did that, then they show up on top of each other, meaning I can stack additional edits. So the question is, what presets might I want to stack when I import images? Now, the first one of these presets we might want to stack would be base characteristics. We're going to find it right here. I have it in my color tool tab, but it does initiate inside of the adjust tool tab as well. So if I have base characteristics, it usually defaults to the generic profile for your camera. And one thing we've spoken about before is the ability to choose pro standard. This is going to be a wider color range, and I've already selected that for my camera. I can come up to the three dots and I can save a default of Pro Standard, meaning that every time I import images from this camera, it chooses the Pro Standard color profile as opposed to the generic. Now that's great as it is. But if I have a, used a color checker passport to create a, uh, we're going to come to it here, a custom style or a custom camera profile for my camera as I have with mine, then we can create a preset. I have one for my 7R4 and for my older A7R3. If I choose that, it's the expanded and tailored color range. And that is a larger color range for my particular camera than any generic profile that I could do. So anytime I'm importing images from a from this one camera, I would want to use my profile from that camera. And this is something you make using the color checker passport, something we've talked about before. Now, what's the other one that I might want to do? The other preset that I very well might want to use uh, with images upon importing is lens correction. So with lens correction, it defaults to adding in a distortion characteristic that is known for the lens. So with this particular uh, lens, it didn't feel it needed any. Some lenses import with more distortion being applied, more distortion correction being applied. But it does not automatically bring in diffraction correction or light fall off. So let's take a look at when this might be useful. We're going to come here to my library, user collections, and let's go ahead and take a look under landscape and my maroon bells picture. So here I have an image of the maroon bells, and with this image it defaulted to a large amount of distortion correction, which is good because this lens has quite a bit of barrel uh, distortion, but the diffraction is actually needed in this image. If I come into it here, and then I turn on my diffraction correction. Here is my before and after, and it just sharpens up the image. So there's diffraction, and I also probably need some light fall off because I'm getting some vignetting on the edges. So I'll take a look at the image. I'll bring back the light fall off just a little bit to make sure that I'm not losing light in the corners due to diffraction. Now this 
is an adjustment that is particular to this lens. So what I might want to do is use a preset. Come to the hamburger menu here, three dots, and save a custom preset. And look at the ones that I have made. I have them for my lenses. So for each lens that I have made a profile for, I've got it as a custom preset. Well, when I'm bringing images in, and let's drop the lens correction tool back into the right tool tab. So when I am importing images, if I know that I'm bringing in images from this camera, but I know I'm also bringing them in from lens correction, this lens, well, why would I not just bring in presets that are going to do the correction I want anyway for the camera and the lens. And then I could stack a style if I wanted to. And in this way, all of the small minor detail work to get my image to the appropriate starting point is already done for me. So anyway, that is stacking presets in Capture One. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.